However, given that this passwords file is quite large and it's gonna take a potentially long time, I'm actually gonna do the reverse and- Hey everyone and welcome to the video. Hope you're having a lovely week. And by the way, I renamed my channel to Imdad Codes, so hopefully that sounds better. It has a better ring to it, but let me know in the comments below what you think. With that said, today's video is gonna be another exciting Python project. I posted a video on my channel not long ago about how you can build your own Python keylogger and that went down pretty well. So if you haven't already yet, I'll link to it above, so do check that out. That gave me inspiration for this video and so what we're going to do today is build our own password cracker. Now password security or more generally cyber security is probably one of the hottest topics and in industries today. Passwords today are usually stored as hashed values and these hashed values can actually be decrypted. We're going to write a super cool program that goes about running a dictionary attack to crack these hashed passwords. You're going to learn an incredible amount in this video today. You're going to learn much more about the SHA-1 hashing algorithm, encrypting and decrypting passwords in Python as well as processing all of that and getting back the original password. Now feel free to just watch along, you don't have to code with me. This is meant to be a beginner friendly tutorial and I'm going to explain every single line of code so you have a really good understanding of how to build your own password cracker. With that said, buckle your seatbelts and let's get started. just before we start writing any code, I'm just going to take a minute or two to explain SHA-1. And I think this is really important, not only to follow along with the tutorial, but more generally to understand why SHA-1 is used, where it is used, and the importance of it. So this diagram depicts the end-to-end -end process of the SHA-1 algorithm in action. On the left-hand side, you have an input, which is three zeros, and essentially it goes through what's known as a hash function. Now a hash function is often used interchangeably with algorithm, but essentially in this box or in at this step, what happens is an algorithm is applied and you know a bit of math is done as you can expect. And what it will then produce is an output that looks like this. Now this is a SHA-1 hash and it's actually 40 characters in length and each character is actually a hexadecimal digit. Um, you don't need to understand too much about hexadecimal, but the most important thing to take away from this diagram is that the input is very different from the output. And this is essentially what a hash function like SHA-1 does. It takes an input and it yields what looks to be a very different output. Now, there are many different hash functions. SHA-1 is just one of them. You also have MD5, you have SHA-256, you have AES-256, you know, all of these hash functions, the ultimate goal of them is to help us build applications. And what kind of applications am I referring to? Applications such as data verification. So for example, when we want to verify the authenticity and integrity of a document, to verify that it is the same document that someone sent to us, for example, or maybe we want to be able to hash a user's password. So for example, if they're logging into a website or so actually signing up to a website and they enter a password, we hash that password and we store the hash in the database so that we don't have plain text passwords stored in the database and that adds an extra layer of security. You know, these are just some examples of why and how we use hash functions. But most importantly, the thing again to take away is that the input here will always be different from the output. Now, just one more thing before we get onto the tutorial, and that is no matter how many times that we run this hash function, and this is the case for most hash functions, um, but especially with SHA-1, no matter how many times you run it, whether it's a million, 10 million, 100 million, however million times, um, the point is that if the input will always render the same output, and that's really important to sort of drill down, right? The input, um, the same input will always render the same output. And that is important when it comes to doing the data verification and uh, for the rest of this tutorial, right? So I'm using VS Code today and all I've done is created a folder and I've called it SHA-1 Password Cracker. And in there, I've got a main.py file. So I've just made this a bit bigger so it's easier for you to see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the classic if name main check. I always add this in all of my Python programs just so uh, Python knows where to start running the program. And in this case, we're gonna run the main method. Why on earth has that opened? I don't know. Um, but in any case, uh, that looks good. So essentially, we're gonna start by running the main method. I'll leave it empty for now. So we're gonna start off by asking the user for the SHA-1 that they want to crack. And we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna say the user SHA-1. And then we're gonna take an input as we do in Python and we'll say enter the SHA-1 to crack. We'll take that as an input. And what we want to do is we want to clean that SHA. And the reason why that's important is we want to get rid of any um, any spaces or any uh, yeah any spaces at the beginning or the end of the input that the user gives. So we'll just call this uh, cleaned user SHA1. And then that'll be the user SHA1 strip 
and then we'll leave it there. Now there's one more thing that I want to do and that is to turn this into a lowercase SHA-1 and I'll get on to the reason why we do that later on in the video. Now that we have the SHA-1 that we want to crack, the next step is actually loading up a list of passwords. You're probably wondering where are we going to get a list of passwords and actually we're going to do that right now. Now all I've done is gone to Google and type password list file and as you can tell there are a lot of results. The reason why is because dictionary attacks are very common in ethical hacking and as a result a lot of people do share these password files and these can get very large very quickly. Now I'm just going to pick the top one here and this one is on GitHub and then if I click view raw what that will do is it will load the entire password file in the browser and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the address from the browser and then we come back here to VS Code and actually I'm going to open this and clear that and then what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the curl command so curl is a handy way or in this case I'm using it in a very useful way to be able to download this file right um, because I'm too lazy to you know, click save as in Safari. And no, this is uh, one of the common things that programmers do. So anyways, curl, paste the URL. And one thing is I want, um, I don't want to keep the original file name. This is called 10 million password list top 100. I think that's million, right? Dot text. It's too long a file name. Uh, so I'm going to use the dash O option and then type passwords dot text. And what that will do is it's going to download the passwords file. It's quite large, as you can tell. I think it's eight megs. Uh, minimize that and then if I go on the left hand side um, as you can tell it downloaded the password file and again this is quite large so that looks good right so let's load up the passwords file and we can do that using with open um, get rid of that and then here we're going to have uh, passwords.txt as f and that looks good and then the next thing that we want to do is we want to iterate through every single line in this file because each line is a password so we'll do for line in f and then what I want to do is have a variable called password and that's going to be the line. But what I want to do is take, uh, get rid of any spaces just in case there are spaces. I don't think there are, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So we'll store that um, in the password variable. Now this is where it gets fun. We're actually going to convert this password into a SHA-1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the comparison with the one that the user gave us and that will allow us to be able to check if we have a match and then in that case we'll find the password. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to call a function. So what I'll do first of all is I'll create a variable here called converted SHA-1 and then I'm going to set that equal to the result of running a function which is going to be convert um, text to SHA-1 and that is going to take password and that looks fine and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and then define this above. So we'll create a function here that's going to take in some text. And essentially, this is the function that we're going to use. And in this method, um, function method, I use them again interchangeably. Um, but this is the method that's going to have the code that's going to convert the text into a SHA-1 and return it back. Now, luckily, Python provide a library called Hashlib. And Hashlib, as it sounds, contains a bunch of functions that allow us to work with hashes and um, SHA-1s and SHA-2s, I believe, and SHA-256, and you know, the list goes on. And we're going to make use of the SHA-1 uh, function on the hash library. So the way you do that is, uh, let's start by creating the variable called digest, and then we use the hash lib. Um, and then there's a method called SHA-1, and that's the one we want to use. And as you can expect, this one is going to take uh, the text, so we're going to pass in the text. Now, one thing uh, when it comes to calling this SHA-1 function is that, and I can show you if we go into it, is that what it requires is a, an encoded string, right? And the reason why that's important is because this text isn't encoded. Now, encoding in Python is quite a complex topic, so essentially uh, the way to think about it very simply is encoding allows us to have a universal standard, not just in Python, but other programming languages um, and other applications. It provides a universal standard that allows us to be able to handle special characters and emojis and all that sort of fun stuff when it comes to working with the text. Now this SHA-1 function again requires an encoded string and so we need to encode this text and it's quite simple. All you need to do, as you can probably guess, is type encode. Um, and luckily that function is available to us on any string in Python. This by default encodes it with the UTF-8, but again, you don't need to worry about that detail too much. Now what this SHA-1 method actually does is it creates a hash object, but again, we want the SHA-1. 
And so to get that, what we need to do is we need to call another method on that, which is hex digest. And this returns back the long 40 character or 40 hex character string that you saw earlier. And that's the one that we're going to use to do the comparison with. Now that we've got that, all we need to do is return it. So I'm going to type return digest and that will now return it back into this um, variable here. And now we can do the comparison. Now, just to make this a bit easier to see, I am going to put this on a separate line down here. And then what we do, um, we're going to write the comparison. So the comparison is going to be quite straightforward. It's going to be an if check. So we're going to check if the uh, cleaned user shot, uh, which is the one the user entered and you know we cleaned it. Um, and we're going to check if that is equal to the one that we've just converted, which is here. Then we can print that the password has been found. And I'm going to make use of the S string. So we're going to type password found. And then what we'll do is we'll print out the password and the password again is just above here. Now, earlier I mentioned that we need to turn the SHA-1 that the user gives us, um, we need to turn it into a lowercase. And the reason why we do that is because actually when it comes to doing the conversion, so in this library, um, when we call the hex digest function, this returns a SHA-1 again, but it returns it in a lowercase too. And that's really important because when it comes to doing the comparison, the casing for both of these need to be the same. Otherwise, it's going to report a mismatch um, even if we have the right password. Now, once we find the password, all we want to do at this point is return. In other words, we don't want to continue um, going through every line because we don't need to write because we'll find the password. And then down below here, if we get to the point where we went through the entire passwords file and we went through every single password and we never found a match, then we come down here and we print, we could not find the password. And that's it really. So I think that's, oh, let me hide that. That's the entire program. So let's actually test this and give it a run. Right, so usually what would happen is a user would find a SHA-1 or you'd find a SHA-1 that you wanna crack. And what you'd do is you'd run the program and you'd enter the SHA-1 right and you'd begin the cracking process. However, given that this password file is quite large and it's gonna take a potentially long time, I'm actually gonna do the reverse and because I just wanna show you that it works. So I'm just gonna pick a password here let's say Lakers, I'm gonna go online and I've got this SHA-1 hash generator and if I paste the text here, that gives me the SHA-1. So let's just assume, you know, pretend that I never did this, pretend, you know, I've just got this SHA-1 and I wanna crack it and what I will do is I'll run the program, I'll paste the SHA-1 here and it will run and as you can tell that was pretty quick and it found the password so that goes to show you that this worked because what it did is it ran through all the passwords it converted them to sha ones and it found the match and in this case it said password found and it was indeed lakers now to show you that it won't work let's run it with a password that isn't in the passwords file so i'm going to head back to the passwords file and let me search for a string which i'm pretty sure won't exist maybe porsche yeah, that doesn't exist, right? So I'm gonna copy that this time. And then what we'll do is we'll head back to Safari. And then here I'll paste the text. I'll grab the SHA-1 this time. And we know again that it doesn't exist. So now if I give this a run, I'll paste the SHA-1. And as you can tell, it's taken a long time. Well, it didn't take that long, but it said could not find the password. And that's exactly what we expected. All right, so make sure you subscribe as well as tap the bell icon if you want to see more cool Python project tutorials like this. I'm sure you enjoyed this, so I'll see you in the next video. Peace.